This is Radio TV Phono Nut, and we have something here that I'm really not that familiar with, so if anyone can shed any light on the subject, then fire away. This is a Sylvania model SFM4 FM subcarrier receiver, and here is the little staple together instructions that came with it. This was a cheap eBay purchase, and about all I know about FM subcarriers is that back in the day, a lot of the subscription music services that 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 catered to supermarkets, department stores, you know, the background elevator music that you heard over the speaker system, it often came from a subscription music service that was broadcast over a, an FM subcarrier of a local radio station. And I know in more recent years, the radio reading service for the blind uh, used FM, an FM subcarrier, usually of public radio for whatever state they were in, to broadcast narrators reading newspapers and magazines and books, etc. Now, we've already done a video on this, but just to refresh your memory, this is one of the special receivers for the radio reading service for the blind. I think these are available in all states and depending on your area, if you qualify for the service, you'll receive a, a radio that's tuned to the correct frequency for your location. In my case, it's 88.1, which is the public radio frequency. And the only controls on this receiver is the all phone and volume knob and a switch on the back to select between the main carrier which is public radio or the sub carrier which is the radio reading service. He is going to resign for his Navy deployment. Those are just some of the headlines That's and the stories radio we'll reading you service. On this Thursday. So let's get started. Republican lawmakers backing new... Okay. The name of this is a Norver. I think these were actually made by McMartin. Probably dates from the 1980s. Okay, back to this Sylvania on the very last page of this little stapled together instruction book. This was provided by some background music outfit gives an address for Chicago, Illinois. And there's no frequency dial on this radio. You have an all phone volume knob here and a tuning knob here, but no frequency readout. And about all they tell you in the instructions is as far as tuning, you either press button number one for the background music and tune the dial to the, or tune the knob, because there is no dial to the correct station. Or for regular FM, you press that button, and of course here's our antenna, and on the side here it looks like we have connections for a wall wart power supply and an earphone jack. On the back we have antenna terminals, and this is probably a line output jack to connect the receiver to an external amplifier. Okay, let's put some juice to this and see what happens. We are on FM. Have this level of protection. This thing's not great by any means. I'm sensitivity is not what it should be, and I'm picking up the same station on multiple parts of the dial. Okay, that's it. Now, subcarrier. And this is about all I'm getting on that. And it's 
pretty much the same thing with the other two buttons. I've already tested this. Of course, I can't get the radio reading service on here. Well, I can't even pick up public radio for that matter, so I think this thing needs some attention, but I'm not going to give it any attention. I'd like to get a some kind of service manual for this before I dive into it because like I said this is not something that I'm really familiar with and let's open it up and have a peek at the inside here's the inside this is our main circuit board and it's interesting that this set has a ferrite bar antenna in it when you know this is apparently not an AM set it's supposed to be FM only so I don't know why they would need this ferrite rod bar antenna. Here's another board back here. Looks like with some coils on it and some more circuitry. Here's our selector switch assembly and of course our battery compartment. And I guess there's only one way to find out what this switch is for. It's here. That's not accessible through the outside. We just flip it and put power to it and see what happens. Well, we now know what this switch is for. This is actually... It appears now that they took a stock AM-FM chassis and modified it for FM subcarrier use. And even though the switch is here, it's not accessible through the outside of the case, but whenever I flip the switch over to the other position, we have AM reception. And that's what the obviously the big ferrite rod antennas for. Be because they not worried. They don't give a the plan of the week you can click on that and learn a little bit about hydrangeas all that Gary. really hate to modify this thing because of the, the scarcity of it, but it would be real tempting to cut out a little notch in this plastic here where I could uh, access this switch from, from uh, outside the case. And if we take a peek under the circuit board, we can see where there's, a, there's a provisions for a dial here. And in fact, you can see they have it strung from the tuning knob over here to the 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 wheel on the tuning condenser but they don't have it strong for a pointer and if you look here you see where the dial is actually in place for AM and FM with numbers on it and on the front of the radio they just have a decal covering the dial up so this was clearly a case of a they took a stock AM FM chassis for a standard portable transistor radio and modified it for subcarrier use and according to this sticker on the bottom this receiver was not to be used by the general public it was intended solely for the authorized reception of multiplexed uh, signals by an authorized radio station so yeah whoever subscribed to whatever background music service was likely issued one of these receivers for their use Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching and more to come later.